All right, buddy. So, what's your name and where are you from? My name is Leslie Sharp, and I'm from Washington, D.C., the Northwest part. From uh, D.C., huh? Uh huh. What, what do you say? A part? The Northwest part. Northwest, Northwest part. Uh-huh. All right. Uh, what are some of the dangerous hoods out D.C., man? Um, You got my neighborhood, which is Kennedy Street. Um, You got 640, um, Brave Farm, Saracen Quarters, Saratoga, Edgewood. Man, it's, it's a lot of bad neighborhoods up here. Yeah, I know, man. They still call it Chocolate City out there? Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. Uh. So you done some you done some time. This is the thing about DC and a lot of people don't know this, man. DC is the feds. Yeah, everything you know, federal. They Every have felony. No, yeah, they have no city jail. They don't have no county jail. And honestly, I don't know too much about it. I know uh I know it's the feds. Yeah. But as far as if they go to prison, do do people go to like regular federal prisons? Yeah, like once you get incarcerated, they take you down DC jail, and you sit and you fight your charge. And if you got a felony and you found guilty of it, they send you to any fed in the United States of America. That's wild, man. So even if it's yeah. not, it's even if it's not really considered a federal charge, you're gonna be going to the feds because it happened in DC. Yeah. Uh, and, and we're gonna talk about. You say you've been to prison, correct? Yeah, I've been. I've been in the feds four different times. Four different times. All right. Uh, yeah. You're a perfect candidate for this show. <laughs> uh, but no, nah, man. Uh, man, you can carry up to two ounces in D.C. now, right? Yeah. Illegal marijuana. That's crazy, yeah. man. So they got vendors yeah. and stuff out there? I haven't even been up there since yeah. they legalized it. Yeah, yeah, they got legal vendors. But you got to have a like, uh, medicinal marijuana card to get it. Is that messing up the whole uh, street weed game, man? No, nah, not really. No? Nah? No. Nah. Prices what's the prices of there for like let's say an eighth in the uh legal legal weed? Like fifty bucks? Um it, it depends on what you're getting. So everybody chasing rabbit weed. Yeah. So uh a regular player like fifty dollars. Yeah. And all right, man, so what'd you go to prison for? Uh the I guess you went four times, so yeah. let's just the say first the time. the major, major things you went for. Um, the first one I uh, caught when I was 16, but I got charged as an adult for uh, distribution of handguns and conspiracy to armed robbery. And the most recent one was uh, possession of a firearm. And in this uh, federal city jail in D.C., who typically runs that joint? I mean, like, like now, the jail is more, like, in my opinion, the jail is a little more crazy than the fix. You got a bunch of D.C. dudes there. From different neighborhoods so they try to segregate it so like this neighborhood don't come across the other neighborhood so it won't be a whole bunch of dumb stuff going on yeah and so it's really just neighborhoods yeah okay there ain't no there ain't no gang activity in there they don't click up you know by gangs uh from neighborhoods we don't do gangs in dc we do neighborhoods really like we so, grew up from. so you don't see so you'll see let's say uh blood and crip are from the same neighborhood yeah. Nah, we do uh, neighborhoods like so, where you grew up from. So no gangs. Like you may see a very very few bloods because they went to the feds and uh, had some like convert them over, but like you rarely see that. Like like most DC dudes don't really respect gangs; they respect neighborhood. That's pretty wild, man. Yeah, like you you can't walk around DC and see Crips over there, Bloods over there, or anything like that. It's all neighborhoods. They ask you where you from. All right, so what what would you say is the neighborhood that tends to have most of the power in lockup when you were in there? Um, it depends on what unit you're on because, like, like I said, everybody that get catch a charge in D.C. they send you to D.C. jail. Yeah, and like because of where you're from, your neighborhood might be beefing with somebody else's neighborhood, so they might when you go uh, through intake and they see your address, they will put you probably like on the uh, second floor on the max block. Versus putting you on the uh, first floor on the max block because they know it's a lot of people from the opposite neighborhood on that uh, unit. So they're doing and the down. same thing in other states where they separate gangs, but in D.C. they're separating the hoods. Yeah, yeah. That's wild as hell, man. Yeah. <clears throat> and how is it, man? How how do they feel? Is it like uh, 
Does everybody, because I know it's considered federal, does everybody have a bed? Is there anybody sleeping on the floors or anything like that? How's the food? Uh, they they uh, got bunk beds in the cell. Yeah. And as far as the food, they feed you soy everything. Soy. Rice and soy, potatoes and soy, noodles and soy. All that should go to commissary. Yeah. And if you ain't going to commissary, you're going to starve in there and you ain't eating that soy. Yeah. Do you do you remember who, who was running the commissary? Was it Keefe or anyone like that? Oh, yeah, Keefe, yeah, Keefe, uh, do commissary there. Keefe making so much damn money, man. Yeah. Keefe <laughs> and Airmark, they're making I know money. Airmark, uh, make the food, but, yeah. uh, Keefe, uh, control the commissary. Oh, yeah, maybe that's what it was. Maybe that's what it was. Uh, yeah, but they're making some bank. Yeah. Uh, how much is it to make a phone call in there, man? Uh, 99 cents for a local phone call. Well, that ain't too bad. That ain't too bad, I guess. Uh-huh. I heard they're about to pass a law where free call or actually it happened in one state where all calls are about to be free can you imagine that i mean in dc jail people getting stabbed over the phones now so i yeah. can imagine how it would be if it's free that's exactly what i was thinking i was yeah. like man all these dudes gonna be having free calls man there's be so much crap going on at the phones uh because now in dc jail you got eight phones typically you got eight phones so you might have a northwest phone a southeast phone Southwest phone, then you got these dudes who got their phone, and these dudes who got their phone, yeah. and only them couple of people will use that phone, and nobody will use that phone unless you want to get stabbed. Well, let me ask you this, man, because I know a lot of white dudes ain't ain't living in those hoods. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, you rarely see white dudes now, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I've been through some of those hoods out D.C., man. There are definitely ain't no white guys. So what happens to white guys in there, man? They pretty much get walked all over in there? Uh, it depends, like, like, cause there's some men up there, that, like people who have been to the feds and who on man time, and they respect the man who ain't into none of that nonsense and may want to use the phone or whatever. He may say, okay, well, once my man get off the phone, I'm gonna go ahead and let you make a phone call, but when you finish, you give me back the phone. See, <laughs> see, the key word is I'm gonna let you use the phone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And that's how it is, man. You know, uh, a lot of jails I was in, you know, a lot of Bloods or Crips were running the phone, mainly Bloods, you know. So I would get in close with some of those guys, you know, and talk to them, and then, boom, you know. That's the same exact thing they say. Yeah, you got the phone, bro, but make sure you give it to me when you're done. You know, so don't don't let it just be hanging now. Uh, Yeah, I know, man, down the jail, like, you may see a phone hanging, but you know not to touch that. Yeah, don't touch that shit, man. Just let it hang. And I've seen a fight happen over that, dude. Let the phone hang, and someone was on the phone still, and yeah. uh, someone came, hollered about the phone, no one answered, so he hung it up and started using it, you know, and dude came back, and, and that's how it all popped off over that damn phone. I've seen a lot of stuff go on with that phone, man. Uh, yeah. So what was some of the wildest shit you've seen in there, man? Oh, uh, I didn't see down the jail. I didn't see like stabbings left or right, like like. I say they stab you over the smallest things because a lot of people can't fight or can't take a, a, a beating, so they rather stab. Yeah. So I don't see if you get stabbed over the smallest, stupidest stuff like cutting in the uh, line. Because like when they come to serve the food, majority of the time they make you line up or whatever you got, get your tray, go sit down and eat or whatever. And you may have a person who feels as though you don't want to stand in line and might want to cut in line and if you don't want to get stabbed or. Somebody might go on to the visit on, on the television screens. So you, and it's right under the phone. So you might be running the phone and might leave it hanging and go on a visit. And then next thing you know, somebody just randomly jump on your phone and you jump off the joint of the visit and go do what you gotta do. Or you might be on a visit with your girl. And next thing you know, somebody walking up behind you, stab you in the back of your neck and all in your head and stuff. Yeah. I, I just seen a lot of little dumb stuff down the jail. Yeah, that's wild, man. They, so they have the visitation with the little uh, TV in the bar. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's not bad. That's not bad. I mean, I mean, I believe it is because, like, you never know who know who you know. So, like, you might be walking past the visiting screens and a female might pop up that you're familiar with. And then you may just go to say hi, and next thing you know, her dude is coming to stab the hell out of you. <laughs> <laughs> That kind of reminds me of a guy I was locked up with, man. I told a story about it. I was chilling with him for a while. And yeah. then he showed me pictures of his girl. I said, oh, shit. 
That was a girl I slept with like five years ago, you know? <laughs> I was like, damn, yeah, I don't know her. Yeah, I've never seen her before. <laughs> Ah, uh, but yeah, I know what you mean, man. And plus, probably people are all up in your business, man. Probably looking yeah. down from the tier or something. I don't know how it's set up, but I'm sure people are uh, scoping out your Like shit. how I am, like right now. Yeah. Like, it, like behind me, it'd be a little wall, but it's an opening on the side. So people be working out at the back and then be spinning the bent yeah. and me having to be keep peeking at your screen. And there you go. It's an altercation over. Yeah. Something as minor as that. Yeah. Is it like a. Uh, they got, is it like a newer jail or is it pretty? No, nah, it's old. It's old. Where is it located, man? I haven't even seen that um, damn it, jail. It's located in Southeast DC. Okay. So that's probably like right when I come in, when I'm coming over there. I haven't even seen the building, man. Is it a small building? No, nah, it's a real, it's a tall building. Got, uh, I believe, uh, three floors on, it's a DC jail side and it's a CTF side, but they all connected to a catwalk. Yeah. But DC jail side, I believe it's like three levels high, and it got eighteen units. It's six units on each uh, floor. Okay. And how much? Uh, what's the drugs like in there, man? I know there's some drug use in that in that joint. Yeah. They got a lot of K two in there and stuff like that. No, no, they got a lot of dope. Yeah. Oh, uh, weed, cigarettes, and not really. And they got sabachi strips, but they don't really have like too much K two in there. See, like in the in the jails around here, man. The prisons is different; it's flooded. But yeah. the jails over here in Virginia, man, or at least the ones I've been to, man, they got it on lock. Like it's almost damn. It just depends on who came in. But for real, yeah. you never see any kind of drugs in there, man. At least it just in the jails that I've been in. You know, you'll see some cigarettes come through, or maybe some yeah. uh, someone brought some powder in every once in a while. But for the most part, man, they're they're good at it, you know, good at uh, keeping that shit out. So it's pretty crazy for me to hear all these people saying county jails got flooded with all these drugs and stuff right. like that. So, yeah, that's wild, man. They even so, have a few cell phones every right now and then down there. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So you say, so you say D.C. is uh, the jail's worse than the federal prisons. Yeah, yeah I, I, me personally, I will, and I, I'm pretty sure it's a lot of people that agree with me when I say the jail is far worse than the feds. Okay. Because see, when you're in the feds, D.C. overpopulated the feds because it's it's uh, everything federal. So it's more D.C. inmates than all the federal facilities or whatever. But when you go to the feds, you got older dudes who've been there for a while who kind of tell the youngest, like, like this ain't the jail. Like, we, man, respect man, because if you go do something to one of these out-of-towners, then you got the whole D.C. car getting into it with everybody. But I, bet the DC, DC, I bet that D.C. car is big in the feds, huh? Yeah. Since everyone has to go there from D.C. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, most of the times the feds, they will ship you to other states. Uh -huh. Is that how it is for y'all? Yeah. They, they will like I've, been, I've been uh two different spots in Pennsylvania, and I've been in uh, uh, a spot in Maryland twice. Okay, so they probably don't ship y'all too far, let's say someone... You know, because I hear some people, they get shipped from California down to federal prison in Florida, you know. So, uh, uh, I'm, I'm guessing if it's just, you know, since y'all are from that area, they probably don't move you too far. Like, my home, one of my best friends in lockup, Dre, man, I'll never forget him. He was from D.C., and he came uh, to Virginia, you know. So, it doesn't sound like they're moving people too far. It, it depends on your, your, your custody level and also the profile of your case. I've had homies that then went to uh, Victorville, which is Cali. I had one, like my little brother right now, he's in Chicago. Uh, I don't have homies like down Atlanta, Florida. I, I, it depends on your case. And like, say if like if you used to get shipped to like Pennsylvania and you used to do something crazy, they're going to send you somewhere far. Yeah. yeah. And what? how do they get you back home? Do they just fly you back? Yeah, work your way back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They fly you back, but you gotta work your way down. Like they send you to what's called a smooth program, and you might have to stay out there for eighteen months or two years and work your way back down to penitentiary. Yeah. So what's going? What What you think about? Have you heard anything about all these inmates being released with the first step program? Man, you've been reading about that at all? Yeah, I mean, it was coming about right before because I just came home uh, like three, four months ago. Yeah. And they was talking about it when I was uh, when I was on the way home, but I ain't take no action to it yet. 
Yeah, people people always talking about stuff like that. Overcrowding. Uh, oh, they're about to release all these people. And then you hear uh-huh. the cat say, well, they ain't going to do nothing for violent offenders, so I don't give a shit, you know? Uh-huh. Uh, but look, man, th- it's crazy. Let me read something to you really quick, man. Let me know what you think. I was going to make this a video, but um, I'll read it right now for you, man. And I want to hear your input on it. <clears throat> so the, So... On this First Step Act, they released 2,243 inmates. All right. Uh, 960 were incarcerated for drug-related offenses. 960. 496 were in prison for weapons, explosives-related crimes. 59 were in prison for homicide and aggravated assault. So this, these dudes are letting out violent offenders. I can't believe this. You know, so violent offenders actually have a chance. They may be the ones who've been incarcerated for 20, 25 years and ain't been and getting in no trouble or anything like that. So they feel as though they rehabilitated. Exactly. Exactly. Now, check this one out. They got, well, there's 178 for fraud and bribery and extortion. 118 were, were, were released for burglary, larceny. 106 for robbery and 239 for sex offenses. Can you believe that? Yeah, I could go for that because, like, where I was just at, they had a lot of sex offenders and, like, they put them on a pedal stool. Stop and playing, yeah. man. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. What, where were you just at? At Cumberland, Maryland. FCI Cumberland. And they put them on a yeah. pedestal? What do you mean by that? Like, if you, like, if you even ask them for their paperwork, they ship you out. You what? can't even ask. Yes. Hold on. You check. So if you ask anybody or just them? Just them. Like, they more strict on the uh, pedophiles and sex offenders. So they like, put them in GP with everyone else? Yeah. Because Cumberland is, is like a place for, like, people who been incarcerated over time and don't get in trouble or anything like that. They let you come to Cumberland. Cause it's a good it's a good home spot, basically. Okay. Like, nothing really happens up there. And... These dudes are asking for paperwork, and they uh they can get shipped just for asking someone for the yeah. paperwork. They send you to the hole and take you off the compound ASAP. What are these What are these uh people in there for sex offenses actually like? Oh, this guy just uh, asked me for my paperwork. You know, to the police or something. Yeah, they go. They tell. That's crazy, man. And so they don't get their own like uh, unit or anything. They just no. They out in population with everybody else. Yeah, that's wild. Virginia was like that when I was locked up. They had these dudes just walking with GP, man, you know. And then now I believe they have their own little housing unit because people were really messing them up. Uh, yeah. So people weren't picking on them, huh? Or they, I mean, they were had, scared yeah, to, huh? You had people who, who didn't care and were still running them off the unit, and then they'd get uh, sent off the unit, and then the pedophile come back. That's crazy, man. And then they probably go to, like, say, if you was uh, the shot caller of the Virginia car and one of your homies was to uh, check one of them in, they'd take him off the compound and come to you and let you know, like, if any anything happened to this dude, then your whole car is gone. They don't come get you and everybody that you affiliate with. That's crazy, man. So now they leave it up to you to make sure that that guy's all right, man. Leave that man alone, man. Can you picture that, man? You got some damn shot callers in there or whatever you want to call it. Guys with power say, hey, don't touch these sex offenders, man. Uh, That's crazy. But when you're about to go home, yeah. shit changes, man. And that's A people lot. just want to go home, you know? Uh-huh. So all of that shit goes out the window, you know? Uh, uh-huh. And that's how they control stuff, man. Whether it's from, you know, canteen, visitation, or just, you know, going home. These COs yeah. know that these dudes ain't trying to trick up their time. And they just want to go home. Uh, so I can understand it to an extent, but I know there's a lot of people out there probably going to watch this and trip off of like, that. Like the D.C. dudes, like I said, D.C. overpopulates the face. And there's a lot of young dudes from D.C. between the ages of 18 and 23 who just don't care. They don't care. Yeah. So, like, they do what they want to do. Yeah. Like, you're a sex offender. You're not coming in my cell. You're not coming on my unit. Like, you better not look my way or anything like that. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Um, 
Anybody was there anybody in there like uh trying to snatch someone's juni cakes in there, man? No, it's a lot of homosexuals in, in the feds. So it's open, like open. Yeah, so it, like you ain't got to worry about nobody trying to rape you or anything like that because you got dudes who willingly giving it up. So yeah, you ain't got to worry about that. <clears throat> and how how does uh, I mean these dudes ain't mess with a lot. They're just chilling. Yeah, I mean like like because you got dudes who who who's in the homosexuals. So like a homosexual may come on the compound and they gonna down clothes, shoes, and all that other stuff, and that's his man. Yeah. So ain't nobody going to deal with him, with, with him. And he's ready to push that knife behind him and all that. Damn right. He's definitely <laughs> ready to push that knife in for him. And I, look, man. Me personally, I, I never could do it. Hey, one. look. People trip out <laughs> off that. When I tell stories about that, man, it sounds like D.C. or uh, some of the places you've been to are a lot like Virginia, man. You know how it is. DMV. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So they, they all kind of run kind of the same way, but... Yeah, a lot of people, man, they'll probably trip out after seeing that, you know, come into prison. Yeah. And let's say you're in California, you go into prison, you won't see none of that crap. You know, you come over here uh -huh. in Virginia, you see dudes getting married and all kinds of shit uh -huh. in the yard, you know? <laughs> it's mean, wild, man. It's a different world yeah, on the East Coast, is. man. Uh, that's pretty crazy, man. It's very similar to Virginia, but... So you're out. You're out on probation right now. Parole. I'm on parole. parole. Yeah, I'm on parole. And you got you five said, years. Five years ain't too long. Ain't too long. You just got yeah. out though, so yeah. it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough trek, man. Hopefully you get off a little earlier than expected. Yeah. Uh, you say you got a home. You are waiting on a home visit. I'm right waiting now. on my parole also right there. I'm, wait, speed. <laughs> I'm waiting for him too, so I can say, hey, <laughs> look, you mess with my homeboy. <laughs> <laughs> But no, nah, man. Yeah, home visit. What do they get? What do they typically do in these home visits, man? Uh, they don't really do that. They just come, walk through the house, and look around or whatever. And then, hey, you sign a paper stating that uh, they actually came and you seen them, and they leave right back out. Yeah, they probably only take like two minutes. Yeah. See, I didn't know that when I first got out of prison. They said they were coming to do a home visit, home check. You know what yeah. I did, man? I was a damn green bean. What? I was, I was. I was schooled in the arts of the penitentiary, but as uh -huh. far as the release goes, I didn't know much about it. So they came to do home check. They were walking through. My ass was opening up closet doors and everything for them, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah. I thought they were going to search my closets for guns and shit. I didn't know what they were going to do, you know? So I opened up these closet doors. He's like, you ain't got to do all that, man. You know? I was uh -huh. like, oh, all right. I guess I had a wrong picture of what y'all do with these home uh -huh. checks you know uh, uh so how is the probation and parole this ain't your first time being out on parole or probation right no i've been on doing the same five years parole since 2004 every man. time i go to jail they start it over that's crazy man ain't it that's just i remember i was just a couple uh was it like a month away from being released on probation and i called a charge of shit re reset uh -huh. It shouldn't reset, man. You know, that good amount of time that you were out, that shit should just so deduct add to some. Yeah, it should do something because people are stuck on probation for forever, man. Because it That's resets how I feel. like this. Like I don't even know how I feel to not be on parole. Man, I tell you, when you do, it's gonna be amazing. What? How does that go? Uh, you allowed to smoke weed if it's illegal? No, because the uh, feds don't. The feds don't recognize it. Only a uh, state. That's crazy, though, because the whole state's damn feds. Yeah. Like, I could walk outside of this right now smoking weed and a regular police car ride past and won't say nothing. But if the park police or any other type of federal police see me, they'll lock me up. They don't care if it's just a roach. They're going to they send you to jail. But how do they know that you're on parole? Or they just don't care if you're on nah, parole? No, they don't. No, they, it's just they don't recognize a uh, legal marijuana per. So it doesn't matter if you're on parole, if you're net or anything like that. They see you, you're going to jail. But the uh, but the park police, they don't be in neighborhoods or none of that. What they do you like mean park police? They got a uh, police called park police, and they supposed to only patrol the parks. But they got a lot of neighborhoods that's right outside of parks, and like they patrol them neighborhoods, and like they one of the worst police in D.C. Them and the Capitol Police. So they're not. So they are official police, though. 
Yeah, they had federal police. So I'm just trying. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to break this down, man. You won't get arrested by them, but you would get arrested by the federal police. I thought I'm trying. I'm when the way I'm thinking about it, everything is mm -hmm. federal. So yeah, because DC hell? is basically a federal uh, city. It's basically everything federal. That's why you got the uh, the FBI building here, the White House, the uh, Capitol, and all. Because DC yeah. is federal. That's so why everything in DC is federal. So how the hell are they arresting people if it's legal? Man, I have the slightest idea. That, like I said, the regular uh, police officers, they won't bother you at all. Yeah, that's crazy, man. I don't understand yeah. that shit either, man. Uh, well, damn, man. So you've been out for how long? Probably like four months and change. How does it feel? How long were you in before you came out? Four years. This time I was in for four years. So you fresh out, man. Uh, yeah. How does it feel, though? Is everything going good? I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it's a little hard trying to transition because everything is, is different now. Like, a lot of things change. Like, it's a lot of new, uh, like, everything's getting, like, the neighborhood's getting tore down and they're making it into condos and things of that nature. Like, places that had a lot of apartments is now condos. Like, and they build a lot of Walmarts around here and, and things. It, it's like basically they're trying to make these things like a tourist spot or something like that. Yeah, yeah, they're trying to renovate. And then like pause the jobs. I mean, they hiring felons, but it depends on your uh, your charge and things of that nature. Yeah, that's crazy, man. A lot of violence out there, a lot of shootings and stuff. Yeah, I mean, like uh, a friend of my uh, wife got killed last night. Last night? And Yeah. Man. And a couple of days before that, no one got killed. Like, because DC was is only about like forty five minutes long. So if you beefing, like we're gonna bump heads somewhere. Yeah, it's small as hell, you know. Yeah, That's and it's real. It's a, it's it's. I would say it's overly populated. Yeah. So you're gonna run into your man somewhere somehow. I mean, do you feel as though, a, you feel as though these feuds huh? have been around forever, with uh, yeah. different hoods? Yeah. Why do you think it is, man? I don't like. I, I really don't know. Like some of us grew up beefing and don't even know why we be with this neighborhood. This is our old heads beefing. We grew up. We know. Growing up, we know we we can't go down there and they can't come up here. Yeah, kind of like a pride thing. Like we just tougher over here than you type stuff. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's wild, man. Look, uh, you got anything going on now? You that you like to shout out or anything like that? I mean, I'm uh, trying to get my music thing uh, together right yeah. now or whatever. I'm working on getting the uh, things I need to do. Like, for us, like, uh, I got the laptop, the programs, the beat machine, and things of that nature, but it's just all putting it together right now. Well, that's what's like, up, I'm man. real heavy in the music thing. You good at it? Yeah. Yeah. You got, any, you got anything uh, made yet? No, I ain't started recording yet. That's what I'm working on now. All right, man. Well, look, when you uh, get something laid out, shoot it my way, man. I'll make sure we can bring you on again, talk a little more, and uh, put out your music out there, all right? I highly appreciate it. Hey, man. That's, hey, that's the least I could do. You came on the show, opened <laughs> up a little bit, you know? But, uh, yeah, man, I appreciate you coming on and explaining a little bit about how DC runs. You know, but you opened my eyes to a few things because I knew that was all federal, but I never knew exactly how it worked. Uh, yeah. And as far as the whole weed situation, I need to I need to read up on that. How are these fools locking people up? But other 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 uh, you know law enforcement ain't. Yeah. I, don't, I don't understand that. I'd be pissed. But yeah, man, I appreciate you coming on and uh, talking with me for a little bit. Uh, just keep in touch. You know, be safe out there and. Stay right. free, man, you know? Thanks for the opportunity. Hey, man, you be easy out there. All right, you too. All right, though.